Hi, in this video I have the RCT Lithium Power Bank. Right, here's the unit. The model number is MPPBS 80AC. This is the 80,000 milliamp hour unit. In the box you will get the power bank, then you'll get the charger to charge the power bank. There's a short manual, and then you get this nifty carry bag with drawstring. Right, to give you an idea of the size, it's just under 26 centimeters on the longer side. It's 16 centimeters across the width, and the thickness is 5.5 centimeters. If you're going to be carrying it around, it weighs just over 1.9 kilograms. Right, having a look at the ports on the side, you have the DC input jack. This is the jack when you want to charge the power bank. I plug it in there, and then the other side goes to mains. This DC charger has an output of 2 amps. You can also charge the power bank by using this USB-C port. For example, if I plug in this USB cable, and if on the other side of the USB cable it is connected to a power source, I can also charge my power bank. Now, this USB port can also be an output, which means that you can connect the power bank to your devices to charge them. The power delivery port over here has a maximum output power of 65 watts. That means you could use this to charge a laptop. There's a little air vent over here. Right, at the bottom there's nothing. And then on the other side there are two air vents. I believe there are no fans in this unit, so it is supposed to be quiet. Right, having a look at the top, we have the AC output here. If I want to switch the AC on, for example, if I want to plug in a TV or a laptop here using the regular South African plug top, one needs to slide the slider to the left. There it says on, and if you look closely, there's a red LED here. You might be able to see it over there, and that is telling me that the AC outlet over here is now in the on position. According to the manual, this will auto power off this output if nothing is plugged in. Right, we then have two USB-A ports over here. It says it's rated at 5 volts and 3.4 amps. In order to power the entire power bank on, I need to press the on button, and then you'll see there's an LCD display on the left here. At the moment, it is fully charged, and that is why it says FF. As I use it, this goes down. It might say 98%, 97%, depending on the usage. Over here, I have two cell phones that both can charge with a 65 watt power supply, meaning that these are fast charge cell phones. I'm going to plug them into the USB-A ports. I'm also going to plug in my little meter that measures the voltage and current coming out of the port. Right, I've plugged in my first cell phone. Notice nothing is happening. The reason why is because I have not turned on the power bank. I first need to turn on the power bank, and there we can see... The cell phone is charging and there is the current that it's currently charging at. This current will increase as the phone goes into a fast charging mode. I'm now plugging in the other cell phone. Right, I now have two cell phones being charged. Notice that the voltage is almost 5 volts and that the current is now at 1.4 amps. What I want to show you is that even if I unplug this, the current on this side and the voltage on this side does not change. That is telling me that this is quite good because according to the manual, it's supposed to be able to give me a maximum of 3.4 amps per output. Now having a look at the LCD display, notice that it has now gone to 99%. I'm now going to plug in an AC appliance. I have a 60 watt tungsten globe here. This is the old fashioned type and I'm going to plug it in. I'm then going to use my meter to measure the output voltage and to have a look at the waveform. I'd like to see the output waveform. I've plugged it in using a multi-adapter because I'd like to add some other devices just now. Notice that the light, the load here, has not turned on even though I've plugged it in here. Remember that there is an AC switch here that has to be slid to the right. Using my multimeter, I've connected across the light to see the waveform and the voltage and the frequency from the power bank. Notice that the output is very close to 220 volts. But what you might notice is that the output waveform does not look like a sine wave. Having a closer look at it, you can see that it is almost a square wave. Some appliances cannot tolerate this type of waveform. However, many appliances can, and the battery bank is still useful even though the output looks like that. The frequency is almost 50 hertz. The maximum output of the power bank is 250 watts, although the continuous output is 200 watts. This over here is rated at 60 watts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another load. This is a 50 watt LED floodlight. I'm going to plug it in and watch what happens with this waveform. I'm also going to keep monitoring the USB output. At the moment, the phone is getting closer into its fast charge mode as the output amperage is almost 2 amps. It's now at 1.9 amps. The other phone is also still charging. Right, I'm now plugging in the 50 watt LED floodlight. Keeping in mind that LED floodlights have quite a high inrush current. 
So let's see if the power bank can handle it. Right, immediately the light goes on without any problems. The output from the power bank has remained stable. It barely changed. It is still almost 220 volts and the frequency remains stable. The output waveform, however, still has that square wave shape. Right, I'm going to do a little timing test here. At the moment, the battery bank is still at 82%. I'm going to wait till it gets to 80%. The load is 60 watts over here on this tungsten globe. I have a 50 watt LED floodlight. So that's about 110 watts. I then have two cell phones connected. They are both at 5 volts. Uh, this one's at 1.4 amps. And once this gets to 80%, I'm going to time it on my timer here to see how long it takes to discharge. Right, it's just gone 80% and I'm going to let that discharge and time it. Right, it's about to go 75% at 8 minutes. We've lost 5% from the time I started timing it. And that was 8 minutes with a load of about 120, 130 watts. Right, we are just over 15 and a half minutes and the capacity has dropped by 10%. We are just approaching half an hour. The capacity has dropped by 20%. It was on 80, it is now on 60. All right, we've just reduced below 45%. It's uh, been 52 minutes and I have noticed something on the waveform which I just want to show you. So the voltage has reduced. It was 221 volts and it's now 205 volts. It's dropped about 16 volts. All right, we're almost at 40%. I'm just going to review some of the loads we have. We have the 60 watt tungsten globe. We have the 50 watt LED floodlight. So that's already about 110 watts. We then have a cell phone charging at about one amp at five volts, which means it's five watts. And then the other phone is also at five volts, but it's about 1.4 amps or 1.45 amps, which is about seven watts. Right, so I'm gonna pause it here at 40%. Right, so it lost about 40% of its capacity in about 58 minutes at a load of about 123 watts. Right, it's quite warm. Not very warm. Out of interest, I just want to measure it. Uh, 44 degrees Celsius. Yeah, over here in this corner, also 44. At the bottom, it is definitely lower. Right, I've unplugged the two cell phones that were charging, and I do notice that this is quite warm. These plugs are quite warm. It's probably about 50 or 50 odd degrees. Right, so what happens is this will carry on depleting until it gets to zero, and then it will cut off the power. If I don't want the AC on, I can just switch it off just like that. If I want to turn it back on, I can turn it back on just like that. It has got an overload protection built in. Now I'm going to unplug the load. So everything is now unplugged from the battery bank. And if everything is unplugged, if you leave it like this, it will auto power off in about a minute. Right, there you can see it auto powered off because nothing was connected to the unit. Now I've plugged in the charger, there's the green light telling me it's on, and I'm going to plug it into the power bank. Notice that it immediately starts charging. It takes quite a long time to charge. According to the manual, it takes six to eight hours to charge when using the DC input. Remember that you can also charge it using the Type-C power delivery port, the USB-C port. It says the operating temperature is between 0 and 45 degrees, which I can confirm. Right, I'm going to quickly show you a summary of the connections and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Right, there's the top of the unit and then it's showing you you can plug in all these types of devices. It shows a light projector there, I don't know about that, but um, yes, a fan, a laptop, I can definitely see that happening. Right, then on the front you've got the USB, remember that uh, it's 5 volts. So it has a maximum of 3.4 amps. So it's giving you 17 watts per USB because it says here it's output times two. And then it has the power delivery at a maximum of 65 watts. Right, so what do I think about this unit? Well, some of the things that concern me is the charger is, in my opinion, not very powerful. For example, if I plug this in and you can see it's charging, 38 and it'll go to 39. But if I also plug in my loads, for example, I've now plugged in my 110 watt collective load of my LED floodlight plus my tungsten globe and this will actually go down even though it is now charging. So the charger is unable to charge the unit and power up the AC output. So that means that if your load is quite high, 
you literally have to remove the load in order to charge it. So you could not use this as a type of UPS, it will actually just discharge if the load is quite high. If your load, however, is very small, then yes, it will start charging. For example, if you have just a small cell phone or a low load on the USB, you'll be able to charge a unit and the unit will still be able to provide output power to your little load. However, I can't comment on the power delivery port because I have not tested that. So there you can see it's actually depleting even though the charger is on. Right, something that did bother me is that I connected this to my alarm system. So I plugged in my alarm system over here. It was about 40 to 50 watts and the electricity in the area was off. There was a fault and it was off for quite a long time. So my alarm was running off this battery bank, which was amazing. It worked very well. But when the power ran out, for example, when the battery completely discharged, it went to zero the power bank died. When the power returned, for example, maybe I had left it plugged in, it did not automatically power up my load. I had to manually come and press the button on the front and then was my load re-energized. So that means that if you want to use this in critical applications, like as a backup for your alarm or your electric fence, you will have to come here and re-turn it on after it has completely discharged even if it was plugged in the whole time. Meaning if the mains came back online and started charging the unit, you'll still have to come here to start up your AC load. The other thing is I don't really like the uh, square wave output. I was a little bit concerned that the voltage dropped and the unit still had a lot of capacity left. I'm not sure why it dropped like that because the loading of the unit was way less than the rated loading. For example, the manual says it can handle a continuous output of 200 watts. So even though it says continuous 200 watts, it doesn't necessarily mean that the voltage is stable. So I was a little bit concerned that the voltage had dropped that much. Overall, I think the unit is a good attempt at a battery backup. I was able to charge my phone, I could use my laptop, it seemed pretty good, it doesn't make a noise. In terms of the charging cycles, I'm unsure how long this will last because lithium batteries normally come with a specification about how many times the battery can be discharged and recharged while still maintaining at least an 80% performance. Unfortunately, I did not see any specifications about the battery lifespan in this little short manual. Alright, so I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching and cheers.